Hello, treasured women. Sowing seeds as a gothy leader is more straightforward than you might think. But because our world has so much to say about leadership, we need to break the ties with the world and realign ourselves with God. Today, we're going to free ourselves from the things we shouldn't be tied to so we can partner with God and start to lead others with godly leadership. When I was working in corporate America, I had some really great managers and also some terrible ones. I was also surprised that a few of those terrible ones claimed to be Christians. And sometimes I would work with someone for over a year before they would confide in me that they were Christian too. I've never hidden the fact that I follow Jesus. I didn't always follow him in the ways that I should have, but my faith was instilled in me at birth, and I've never tried to hide the fact that Jesus has always had a place in my life. If every single person who claims to be a Christian was open about their faith, I am sure the world would be in such a different place than it is right now. But it's not too late. You were born for such a time as this. And just the fact that you are listening now means you are ready to do the things God's way and learn what he has to say about godly leadership. The first question I want to ask you today is, how do you define success? Are you working your way from the bottom up and once you reach the top, you'll consider yourself a success? Do you have a financial goal that you want to reach or a certain salary that you want to be paid and then you'll define yourself as being a success? Have you attended a leadership training that told you how to manage a team or resolve conflict? Or maybe you've even attended a conference on how to be a successful leader. Our world has a lot to say about leaders. In fact, our world defines leadership in a very specific way. And unfortunately, it's not from God's point of view. I'm not saying that all trainings are bad. I've been to some really great ones, but the Bible is clear that just being good is not the same as being righteous. You can do all the actions of what appears to be the right things, but it doesn't mean you have a pure heart and you're doing it for the right reasons. Here's what Jesus had to say about this in Matthew 7, verses 22 to 23. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven demons out in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence. You who act wickedly, disregarding my commandments. Whew. If we aren't leading in God's way, with God's intentions, then it doesn't really matter if other people think that we're a good leader. At the end of our lives, the only opinion that matters will be the Lord's, and we only have one chance to enter that narrow gate. I want you to pause because I want to pray for you right now. This is extremely important to me, and I hope it's important to you too. So I want you to close your eyes, put out your hands, and just receive this prayer into your heart. Lord, I ask that you forgive each of us listening today. Forgive us for trying to lead others in the way that the world taught us. God, I ask that you would give us a pure heart. Lord, clean our heart, refine us. Lord, I ask that we just come to you and we focus on you and you remain in our hearts, in our words, in our deeds, in our actions at all times. Father, we love you and we want to do things your way. Father, we want to do things that please you. 
And we want to lead others in your ways, being a good example for you and your kindness and your goodness and your glory. And so, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your forgiveness. God, we praise you for your mercy and your grace. And we thank you, God, that it is your desire for us to become better and better leaders each and every single day. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you just truly repented from your heart right now, God has forgiven you. And when God forgives, he makes you whole again. So now we get to start fresh with his ways. So let's redefine success, your success. Godly leaders teach, train, and raise up other leaders. Leadership success means God is proud of you. You have a chance to be successful every single day. Did you take time to pray? or to look in your Bible in order to make a leadership decision, that is success. Did you exercise a fruit of the Spirit with someone who might not be likable? That is success. In the words of Jesus found in Matthew 16, verse 26, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, but forfeits his soul? Success in God's eyes is very different from how the world sees success. But our eternal soul depends on what we do every single day. And true success means that we will get to live with Jesus for all of eternity. One cannot be more successful than that. I want to give you an opportunity to take action on this today. Identify one person in your life that you're going to sow into. Someone who you can serve, teach, train, and raise up, and then make a plan of action to sow into them in some way every single day. That means praying for them every single day too. Thank you so much for listening today. Blessings to you and your journey of becoming a more godly leader. And if you need additional prayer on your leadership journey, you can leave a comment below and I will pray for you. God bless you.